Please listen carefully. Welcome back to the Focus Target Podcast. This is your host, Captain Smiley, with me today, Van and Shy. Gentlemen, good to see you. Good to see you. What it do, nephew? What it do, indeed. Well, what it do, uh, unfortunately, is to start with a little bit of cleanup business. We've got some announcements to make, and unfortunately, they're not the good kind. Uh, as as does happen in life, sometimes uh, things get a little bit busy. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to take a little bit of a hiatus after this episode. Uh, not sure how long that's going to be. Hopefully not too long. We're hoping to be back for you, even if it's just intermittently, while we kind of get some things sorted out schedule-wise and, and some other stuff. We've all got some stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, we'll need to deal with that's making it hard to find find time to get these pods in. So uh, today we're going to have a, a, a very special early 2013 NHL season preview um, that's only going to be... What? So that's it, 13? Yeah. We are not 10 years ago. It is 2023 in... In, in about six months. So the 2022-2023 season, we're going to give our thoughts on kind of our expectations, hopes, things, you know, the off season's kind of wound down. I think most of the moves have been made that are going to be made. And uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, busing or boosting or murking or whatever term, de- term probably depends what game that you're coming from. Uh, that that idea of carrying people through, uh, through content in, in MMORPGs, uh, which I think is going to be a fun a fun uh, discussion. So that's what you have to look forward to today. And then we'll be back. We'll try to announce something uh, on the channel or something. If uh, you know, to give you guys an idea when we know more about the timeline. So, um, all right. Question of the day. How are you feeling about the 2022, 2023 upcoming NHL season for your respective team of choice? Um, I assume we're all staying with our teams of choice. I hope nobody's bailing after after last season. I mean, if you guys want to come onto the avalanche bandwagon and be with the champions, there's always room, Gross. but uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm guessing we're still riding for Seattle, Colorado and Vegas uh, respectively. So let's start with uh, what I think was one of the more tumultuous off seasons, the Vegas golden Knights van. What, what are you thinking? Tell us about the off season. <clears throat> about your whole- I honestly, I don't, I don't know what to think. There's a lot to think. There was a lot of changes, a lot of big changes, unexpected. Our uh, keen listeners of the pod will remember that I thought certainly they were going to keep Pete DeBoer. They did not do that. So we had a big turnover um, on our coach. We did hire Bruce Cassidy and me being a a novice hockey player. I don't know much about, or hockey player, hockey fan. I don't know much about uh, Bruce. So maybe you can enlighten me. I do know he comes from the Bruins and they've typically been okay. I feel like he's been a while. He's been around for a while. I, I I can't tell you where he was before that, but like he's it's a definitely he's not a neophyte coach. He's a coach who's kind of made the rounds and been with some different clubs. I don't think he has like a a huge winning pedigree, but I do think he's a, a fairly well th- thought of. Yeah, some of these sound like Triple A teams going back to the 90, 1996. So he's certainly been in in the game for a long, long time. The Trenton Titans, Grand Rapids Griffins, Washington Capitals. Chicago Blackhawks. I'm trying so, to remember yeah, if he was that's a prominent. Go ahead. Smile, smile. Do you remember if he was one of the, like the there were a couple of surprise like coach like firings or like you know mm. letting goes over the offseason. I'm trying to remember if he was one of them or not. Like, yeah, well, Boston was such a weird situation with like not knowing what like there's a lot of questions going into the offseason. So I think I mean it is always a little bit surprising when I mean they made the playoffs last year. Yeah. They, they've had a good team. It does team, you know? It does seem like he was relieved of his head coach coaching duties after yeah. the game seven loss to the Carolina Hurricanes, which uh, another team that'll come up later on today in this conversation. Oh, indeed. Real shortly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, yeah. During the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs, so the most recent one. So he was like, oh, on the six, we picked him up, I think, like a week after that. Um, so I guess they just wanted to capitalize on, on an opportunity and we'll see how it plays out. So, um, the other thing, talking about the hurricane, so that was one big change. The other big change, like, if you couldn't have a bigger change, it's this. And it's it's the Vegas Golden Knights getting rid of Max Pacioretty and trading him to the Hurricanes. Now, of all the different ways to stay under salary cap, that was not on anybody's radar at all whatsoever. Um, but this is, a, this is a, an emotional whirlwind, too, because that felt like a gut check 
Um, and then Robin Leonard gets injured. And then it turns out that Max Pacioretty actually got injured as well. So he has a torn Achilles, and he's going to be out for another six months. Now, whether the Golden Knights knew that ahead of time, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're inspected they by doctors to. before trades. They had to, right? And, and everything's sure inspected. Yeah. Yeah. So, Which you know, we lost I'm Max. Sure, I'm sure that's why they didn't get anything back. For I would him, say right? that makes more sense now, right? Great, so. Yeah. But still, yeah, I mean, it's, it's strange to me because they had to kind of have known where Leonard was. Like, they've got a bunch of LTIR money that they're not right. going to be on accountable for it. And, and if L- he was going to be, Oh hurt, man, it almost the whole seems season. Like there's like, why did they feel they needed to get rid of him? That's what I don't understand. Like, yeah. Well, unless, unless like you said, they the knew book. he was going to be hurt also. Right. But he they, knew, they knew like, he was like, nursing. Saying, put, him on, put him on LTIR. And then like, yeah, he doesn't, like, hit the doesn't cap count anyway. against your cap. So, if he's like, hurt. That like is, that. Yeah. Him and Leonard. I mean, that's millions. Yeah. I, 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 once I heard the news about Leonard, I was like, why did they get rid of Patrick? Like, right. unless it was like, did he want to be requested? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Culture, was there maybe like culture really, thing. Like, I don't like, want, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I yeah. know that sucks. Like it sucks. Cause I know he was your, one of your favorite players and oh my God. Like, talking about getting his Jersey. And yeah. I want to go back to listening to that worst. pod and, and I'm worst. pretty sure he was. Yep. Yeah. yeah and, and he, I think he had the longest people. contract at the time for like six more years. Right. And yeah, so which and, you a lot know, of that, changes that probably factors into why they maybe made that move, right? Like maybe they feel like if this guy comes back from this another major surgery, isn't the guy he was? We don't want to be on the hook for him, but we got him and, for five have, more years after. Yeah, this and year, have people yeah. say no, we no, 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 we're not going to take him. Like maybe yeah. they let let him be somebody else's problem or something. I don't know, but yeah, and and then they get future. Considerations. considerations our favorite player <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which that's historically that's an ahl contract like that's what uh, that means generally it's like an unnamed ahl contract nice. um and yeah. that's why you never really hear about it because it's usually so inconsequential but i get it man oh. like it, it's hard when you lose the players you like and like it feels better when you get somebody back you're like all right well i really love that guy but maybe this guy we got is gonna be really great. You know, that's how it was with Kadri. Like I, I was sad when they traded for Kadri because I like those players, but at least I got somebody in return, like to not to get, like you said, future considerations. That's, it's a rough ride. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot not to know that you could even be excited for. Um, but at the very least, it's going to be absolutely interesting to see what the, the Las Vegas golden Eichels can do. Cause they got all, all, all their eggs are in that basket right now. And uh, I am I am looking forward to seeing Logan Thompson get some more ice time. I thought he was really awesome to come up from 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 uh, minor leagues at, uh, last year and perform the way he did. I, I think he certainly deserves that second spot. So it'll be really cool to see what he does. That I think that'll a lot of how their season goes will rely on him, right? How yeah. how does he do in yeah. a full season? So who is do they? What is the main goaltender now? Like who? I don't even know Russ who their Wall? third string. I think uh, Russ Wall, right? Did he play like last? Was he covering for Leonard last season? And did he play well? Like, he was, yeah. Uh, he was mostly, um, and then they they would they gave um I mean because they were down to just just him right after letting um, what's his name go, Flurry. Uh, sorry, Fleury, yeah. uh, Logan Thompson. Oh, so they had, okay. So the depth chart actually lists. Logan as the starter goalie and Brassois as the secondary. I think mm. that's what people so are that's, expecting. That's crazy. Fans. But things always change. That's awesome. like, it'll depend how camp goes. It'll depend how preseason goes. I'm yeah. sure. Like that's a lot of time before the start of the season. So here we are. It'll be fine. What about you? How about the Kraken? The Kraken. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think of all of our teams last season, my team had the most disappointing of all of the records and seasons. I mean, they were an expansion team, and then some people had too high of hopes. I don't know that I was one of them, but we finished, I think, fourth with the fourth worst record. I think it was fourth or fifth. It was it was pretty bad. Um, so I, I would think, argue that Vegas was a bigger disappointment. Well, I mean, I, I meant I meant like number. I meant not like record like. Like yeah. the actual like numbers, like the win loss like numbers. I think you're right. I think there are probably some teams that were more disappointed like by the results of the team, right? I think you could even argue that we're gonna get. What, I mean, you could say Florida might have been the most disappointed team in a league, having had the Presidents Trophy and losing so early in the playoffs. You know, what I mean, like there's a lot of there's a lot of teams. Never mind. All right, I shouldn't have said anything. Forget about disappointments. Um, 
But um, one thing that Seattle went into the offseason with was a lot of cap space. And they'd kept a lot of cap space. And a lot of the fans and a lot of critics were like, what are they going to use this cap space for? Like, I mean, you need to use it well. And I think that, honestly, in my opinion, I think they've used it really well. And I'm really excited to see how um, how next season goes. You know, some of the big things to keep an eye on, in my opinion, are, I think, for one thing, Matty Beniers, who we got – in last year's draft, not the most recent one, but you know, a year plus ago, as our, as the number two pick, he played the last I think it was ten games of the season, and he was a point a game player. Now that's not a huge sample size, and that's honestly kind of like trash time in NHL as well. Like a lot of the better teams are playing, you know, they're not playing their best players, whatever. But for a, a rookie to come in, I think, and to do that is is kind of exciting. So I think a lot I think a lot of Seattle fans are really excited next year to see how he comes out and just is he going to be kind of like our like is he kind of the player that like we would almost like build the team around to a certain extent? Like will he start developing into? And it might be several years before we'd see that kind of performance. But it'll be interesting to see if he kind of you know can maintain that to a certain extent over a long season um you know we drafted shane wright we got him at number four i think it was somehow this last draft you know um which is pretty cool so you know he and he signed so he, he signed his entry-level contract i think he because he was already he'd already had been slated to play in the ohl um and so he's really untested in, in the nhl so that'll be a complete surprise but i think the two things that i think are really exciting to me are the two um you know the two additions we've gotten from other teams in the offseason so one was andre was uh, well burkowski it's not andre is it it's andre burkowski um from the avalanche and so the avalanche obviously had to make sign some new contracts and had to you know pay some money out to their players which they deserve and so they obviously had to you know free up some space and and um you know and whatever and so like andre burkowski was one of the players who kind of was looking for something else and we signed him for i think it seemed like a really competitive deal and I think it, it will give him a chance to really have more make a bigger impact and probably like show his skills more I think he had been kind of relegated a little bit further down the depth chart at, at, at Colorado because yeah. you guys have so many good players so I'm really I'm really excited to see him and I think like a lot of people are projecting him to be like a first or second line off you know forward um he's good enough to be for sure and then and then the like the pickup we kind of made near the end of the offseason that i think i'm really interested in seeing how it works out is uh we picked up oliver bjorkstrand from uh columbus and apparently like a really solid player from their team but they just picked up johnny goudreau goudreau for a giant contract and they had to free up cap space and like we got him for practically nothing it, it, i think a lot of people are still kind of scratching their heads as to why i don't like he's not like a star player he hasn't been a star player but like everything i've heard from his time there and his time in i think it was the whl um uh, but just that he just has a great shot he's just a solid player so i think like we've i think one of the struggles we had in our first season was like you know it was coming out of covid so that's one thing i've heard a lot from like people talking to the seattle players is like they just had no bonding time before the season started so they kind of came into this full nhl season like an expansion team and they didn't have a chance to like really build rapport before the season started and i think that's part of the reason why we saw a lot of the issues out of the gate and also like so many line changes like three quarters through the season you know dave haxtell still like changing our lines up constantly and like i think that was something i heard all the time from seattle media and fans was like just decide on some lines like like commit so these people can like start building chemistry and i think we're going to go into the season probably with more defined lines like they're going to have time this off season training and whatever to really get to know each other we have we have i think some better ideas of what some of our players can do and so i'm 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 really excited to see maybe a more solid season you know like i don't expect us I'm not going to get my hopes up and they were going to make the playoffs, but I think even if we went like 500, which may be too high of an expectation, I don't know. But I think that – I think we're going to see some – I think I think Seattle will look a lot better this year. Um, I, I've, and I hope – I really hope Philip Grub- Grub- Grubauer bounces back. Sorry, that would be the last thing I'm going to say because, like, it was hard to watch him last season, like, kind of flounder. And I, I think everybody knows he's a better player than that. And so, like, I hope he gets his confidence back and he can kind of come back strong. So, Yeah, I definitely – I mean, I watched him for a number of years in Colorado and – I I don't I'm I was surprised with how bad he was. Like I I I do think that part of his success in Colorado was with the team around him, but not so much that he should have fallen off that hard with a decent defensive team in C- in Seattle. Like defenses is, is it's not like they were a, you know paper thin in front of him. So yeah, I I agree with that. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the Avs. I really want to get on to our our second conversation. Um, Obviously you win the cup, you have to pay the tax, right? You have to sign some contracts. A lot of guys are making a little bit more money probably than they ought to. That's, that's kind of how it goes. But um, you know, they're probably not as good on paper as they were last year or the year before. Like they lost Kadri, they lost Burkowski. Um, 
but you know they've got the the core the core that makes them special is still there. They've got McKinnon, they got McCarr, um, they've got some good young players that I think are just getting better and better, like New Hook and Bull Byram. Um, hopefully my boy Sammy Gerard gets uh, gets healthy and gets right for next season. And they brought a couple, like you know, they made some really great deadline pickups that then they ended up keeping. Lekkinen, uh they signed to a long term deal. Uh, Josh Manson, they signed to a long term deal. Like I think those are good, uh, good. Like I'm, I'm pretty happy with the team. Like I think it's going to roll back a, a similar team to last year, and that's not a bad thing when they were as dominant as they were. So, um, I'm excited. I mean, it should should be fun. And you know, you win a cup. It's like when the Broncos won a Super Bowl. It's like okay, you knew that you're going to have some lean years probably down the road for that, and you you, you win you won you won a Super Bowl. You you accept it. You say hey, you got one, and like that's all you can really ask for. So, you know, basically at this point, whatever the Avs can get is is gravy. Uh, and is awesome, but it, my real question would be: Will they have the hunger next year? Like they were so hungry for it this last season, they yeah. were on a mission. Yeah. And will they be able to? Will they be able to keep that up, or will it? You mm-hmm. know that in hockey, especially, I think that kind of attitude, that drive, is such a differentiating factor. So we'll see. I'm, you know, a lot. I mean, obviously, Tampa Bay made it to three straight cups. Like it's not impossible to do. So, but it's just not that common. So, we'll see what happens. Um, any other any final thoughts on on hockey? Any questions, questions, comments, concerns? All right. Well, if you our listeners have uh, you know have thoughts on the NHL season, you know, send it to us. Our email is focustargetpodcast at gmail dot com. Even though we're taking a high days, we'll still monitor the email box. And you know, if you send us some predictions or thoughts now, we can read them whenever we come back down the road and see how well they age. You know, maybe you'll uh, be hailed as a as a prophet and a and a wise man. Or perhaps you'll be hailed as a fool. We'll see. Um, but uh, anyway, let's move on to our main topic today, which is about basically, uh, you know, it has a lot of different names depending on which game you're playing. But what we're talking about here is paying other players in the game to clear content for you. Um, and I think at least to start, let's focus in on like, MMO type games, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, Lost Ark, which is what Shy and I have have seen this in a lot. But I think it's it's you know whether you're currently playing or have played any of those games recently, like it's more about the overarching philosophy that I want to get into today. So, you know, Shy, you've seen a little bit about this uh, in Lost Ark as it's come up, and and perhaps in other places. I'm going to start with you. Like, just what are your, kind of your thoughts on on busing? Is that a good place to start, or is there yeah, somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think maybe we could even explain maybe a couple of reasons, sure. and I can kind of take this. Oh, and yeah, then if you guys idea. want to fill in, like, why would people do this, right? Because I think that's my biggest issue mm-hmm. with it. And I was telling Van, oh yeah, we'll we'll get into this, but um, like, cause I, like part of me is like, like you said, like the whole point of this is someone's paying someone either in real money or in in-game currency to like have other people complete content for them in a video game and so like part of me sits there and thinks through that equation and i'm just like well for one thing you don't need to play this video game like you're playing this for fun i think or for and we all play games for different reasons maybe that's my first problem is i'm putting on other people why i play games you know which is and we've talked about this a lot when we talk about final fantasy 11 or other mmos is a lot of us i think derive a sense of accomplishment a lot of times from playing a game and playing it well we've talked about that before with 11 just like all we accomplished over the years like that meant something to us like we put in hard work and we got stuff done um so part of me looks at like this idea of like oh well i will give you something to then just take me through the content i don't have to do anything but it will but i'll get the results basically right like i'll get the web i'll get the gear drops from it i'll get maybe a title or an achievement from which I think that's the thing that bothers me the most almost is this idea of like someone walking around with like a title over their head or like they've got an achievement that's that makes it seem like they've done something of their own ability. I guess maybe that's my <laughs> my my I'm wearing my my opinion on my sleeve right now. Like the idea that someone could almost like be a poser in some regards, like they've done maybe some really hard content um, and they didn't earn it, I guess necessarily. But that's that's kind of the idea, and and that's the, the let me just say like going into this previous week those were my thoughts now i've kind of especially in lost ark i've run across some situations where i've I've kind of my mind has been opened a bit to like some busing scenarios which i i I understand a little bit more but as i understood it from final fantasy 14 and other games where i'd seen that be prevalent 
um that was that was always my impression and my confusion kind of and and probably derision as well you know some some condescension well, from me before I, before I pass this to van to get his thoughts i want to point out you know I, my wife used the word poser the other day and i was like i don't think i've heard anyone use that word <laughs> in about 15 years <laughs> and now you throw it out casually on the podcast so i guess i gotta eat some crow there and apologize to my wife apparently you know, I maybe I haven't heard it, but it's still out there. So I always knew your wife was a pretty cool lady. So you know, that just confirms that, that just confirms is. it. That she is. All right, Van. What about you? Have you had any experience, like in games that you've played, where you've kind of seen this phenomenon? And whether you have or not, like, what kind of what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I have. I think the first time I was exposed. Well, I mean, can you really can you take it all the way back to even Final Fantasy Eleven, like gill selling? Is it kind of in the same genre where yeah, people pay I real money so. because? Because in, in, in Final kind Fantasy XI, right? there was a lot around, exactly, a lot around literally having a farm, Gil, in order to progress in the game. Whether it be to upgrade your gear for the current level or whatnot. Um, like, you needed these things to, you needed to have them in order to progress. So one of the ways that people expedite their farming was to just purchase purchase money. So that was probably like the first instance I would say I was ever exposed to it. And that was really the first MMO I ever played. Outside of that... Another um, MMO that I played was uh, a lot was Aeon. And I remember one very popular thing in Aeon was selling the end game dungeon drops. Because in that game, if a drop came and nobody in your squad needed it, you can do a shout into world chat and you can say, hey, join our party. Come over here, meet us at this dungeon. You know, this loot's going to be in the cycle for 10, 15 minutes, whatever it was. We'll go ahead and let you lot on it for X amount of, of, of money. Party leader would get traded the money and they would distribute it out to everybody. So same and, exact thing. This person never had to do it. And that was prevalent in Final Fantasy XI too. I remember people, you yeah. have people who would sell Sky dro- sky God drops and things like that. Mm-hmm. And you would just come and you'd sit there and the link shell would kill it. And then if you'd paid, you could jump in and, and get, you know, pay the, pay the link shell big money and especially yeah. in games like that i think i i do think that's the same as paying for progression it's just a different form right especially in a game you look at 11 where it's like your competition is the other players right you're trying to get into a party and if you don't have your set of elemental staves you're not going to be accepted over somebody who does right like you're you're marketing yourself and you need that gill to buy the gear and the spells and the things you need to be accepted to be even able to play. And and so it is, it's a different form, but I think that's a great point. I never thought of it like that, but I totally, we're not talking about something that required one day of farming. Like we're talking weeks, something that either took took a a, a very lucky NM drop, notorious monster drop, or took weeks of beehive chips and, and honey, like (laughs) just an insane amount. So yeah, I think uh, that's what, that's where I've noticed it. Um, What I'd really like to get into is, <clears throat> how is it so different like why why does it seem taboo and and i know we haven't heard your opinions on whether you believe it is taboo or not in my opinion i do feel like it's taboo i feel like it's cheap i feel like it's cheating in a way like it's being disingenuous or dishonest but at the same time how is it much more different than just having your friends take you through like what is the difference, right? And, and I'd really love to to talk into that at some point later on. Yeah. No, I think that's a great topic that we should we should flesh out because there's the idea of it seems a lot more acceptable, even laudable, if I go out and say, "Hey, I'm gonna anybody need help? I'll I'll help run you yeah. through this. I will I'll clear this for you for free, just out of the goodness of yeah. my heart." It's like, oh, what a swell guy! Like that's yeah. helping the newbies, and what a friendly but. But if I'm like, "Hey, if you want to pay me 500 gold, I'll do that," that's like, oh, what right. a, what a scumbag! Yeah. What, and then this the guy person who accepts it, on new what kind of a guy would accept that? Yeah. that that's BS. Yeah, like who's this? Yeah, it's a who's fabulous, this poser? Fabulous call out. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, for me, I think it's I I don't feel any real like derision for it like i mean to me and maybe it's just because i'm a di- in a different place in my life maybe i wouldn't have felt this way if you'd asked like Final fantasy 11 era smiley this perhaps you get a different answer but you know like to me like i i play these games for my own enjoyment it was kind of what what shy was getting at and so like if somebody you know clear gets carried through the highest content because they paid for it and they get a title like That's kind of like, you know, it's like cheating at a game with your friends, right? It's like, what are the stakes here? Like, what do you, what do you get for having that? Like, 
you know, like who are you cheating really like yourself in a way? Yeah. Um, you know, to me, it, like, cause I just don't care. Like I don't really think differently of somebody and maybe it's partially cause I know that like, you don't know how they got that title. So like, it doesn't really mean anything to me. Um, it's not the, the, the title of prestige that perhaps certain other video game accomplishments in the past have been. Um, I think there's definitely like one of the things that I think people do a lot of these kind of boosting and busting things for is, is the calculation of time and money, right? That like, is it that you, are you doing it because you can't do it or is it that you just don't want to? And you're like, you know what? I could spend 20 minutes doing this myself and, and fighting through it the right way, or it's worth it to me to spend a little money, let somebody else do it. And I can go do something else and still be making progress on my character. I, I mean, I think there's, like it's really just a matter of prioritization. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. To me, it's kind of a free market situation. Like nobody's forcing you to pay for those sorts of services. Um, you know, I personally don't like, I think probably all three of us are in a similar boat here. I would guess that like the reason we play the game is to do that sort of content, right? Like I don't want somebody to carry me through the hardest fight. Like why am I playing the game otherwise? And I think, too, that, you know, each game is a little bit different, right? There's some games where, like, let's take maybe Final Fantasy XIV, for example. Like, and I don't know if this is a great example because I don't know how hard some of those story missions were. But I know in a number of times when I went back to that game, like, say a new expansion was coming out, you couldn't participate in any of the new stuff until you cleared all the old stuff. Right? And so I can understand if you're being blocked from a certain content or, like, you know, another, maybe 11 is a better example, right? Like you want to participate in sky, which is an end game activity, but like some of those ZMs are really hard. Those Zillart missions that you have to complete in order to gain access to it. I can understand saying, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get through this gate because I am having trouble doing it myself so mm -hmm. that I can get to the content that I actually want to play. That makes a lot of sense to me. It's that if you're clearing that final content, like that's just like, like a lot of these MMOs, the end game content is the reason you're playing. Like that's the game. That's why you're here. And so if, if you're not running those and you're letting other people running it for you, it's like you're getting the rewards to your point. Shy, you're getting the gear and the drops, but what are you going to use that gear for? Yeah. Right? Like yeah. <clears throat> end game dungeons. Like you're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it'd be like if you paid somebody to grind Diablo for you or something where it's like, you know, you're, why <laughs> like I, yeah. like so, so there's some of it that i understand that there's others that i don't so um so i kind of answered this question a little bit in, in that like not that i wouldn't bus if i felt like you know there was a a, a time saving benefit if it's like you know especially if it's like older content that's like yeah i've done this a hundred times i it's worth it to just get carried through it so i don't have to worry about it but not really for anything that's end game what about you guys would would you consider that sort of thing or or would it would it feel too dirty for you or, or whatever like would would you feel like illegitimate as a gamer if you paid for that that sort of service i'll bounce back to van first <clears throat> i i i don't know i honestly just don't know if i would pay for it or not i i um yeah I, I think for all the reasons you mentioned being older, having less time doing the internal calculation in your head of time versus money versus worth versus enjoyable experience. Um, I, I think I would align similar to what you've mentioned where I certainly wouldn't do end game content. Like I get, I get, I get upset if you guys like, if we're playing a game together and we've been staticking, I'll get upset if you guys walk through the door without even me being there first and then us figuring it all out together or look up strategies without me being there, let alone getting carried. So like, yeah, no, I, I would never do it for something new. That's, that's a great point. I, yeah. I will confirm that for our listeners. Van has never wanted to be carried through anything. Yeah. But uh, I think, I think you do make a good point. Like if there's, if there's a, a weekly dungeon that has to happen, it takes 45 minutes. And it's just absolutely annoying, but you have to end up doing it uh, 60 times, which wouldn't be uncommon for a Korean MMO. Oh like, I, I don't know. There might there might actually be a time there where it's like, hey, I'm doing some work on my computer anyways. I'm in front. Let me throw this up on the second screen and I'll take this. And I got some extra cash from an awesome gear I sold or something. 
I, I, I think it's possible. I think I, I think when, it's very considerable. To be clear, to and I don't know if this is true in all games, but like generally, when you're doing this, like you're still making a profit in the end uh, of some form. It's just lesser, right? Like so, the common one right now I think is like Argos in uh, in Lost Ark, right? Like you get if you do it by yourself, like if you're kind of do the first thing by yourself, you get seven hundred. If you do the entire thing, which usually requires a bus if you're a lower level, you get 2,700. So if they charge you 1,000, you still net out to 1,700, which is 1,000 hmm. more than you would wow. have made. So it's kind of an everybody wins for, situation. For doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> for, for doing nothing. Wow. Right? Or you could like gear up. I and, might come and... back to Lost Ark. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you it know? takes. That's what it yeah. uh, so I want to get your thoughts real quick, uh, and you kind of you kind of yeah. let in with it, but well, so really quick, something you our... think you would ever ride a bus? Uh, well, yeah. So I don't know. So this last, uh, all right. Uh, I don't know if this will be quick. Um, I don't, I'm okay, need a, minute, a couple minutes because I I've I've actually as we're talking, I thought back on an example from Eleven, and then mm-hmm. I have an example from this past week in Lost Ark, and then even what you're saying about thinking putting my, yourself in other people's shoes reminds me of something else with Lost Ark specifically that's kind of my. So let me go back to Eleven and talk about something that maybe fits into this conversation, but I think feel has always felt different to me. I think we'll Van kind it. of alluded to it. Like Van talked about like the grind of like sometimes if you had to buy an item, you still had to grind up the gill, right? So like maybe you were still buying the item, but like you were spending that time like on the other end, right? Like you were farming beehive chips or whatever, you know, mining promo or right. Like that was still a huge time investment. And I remember like one thing I've always been very proud of with Eleven was getting my black belt. Now I didn't join an H and MLS. I I couldn't join an H and MLS. Like it just wouldn't. I was working full time. I couldn't. That wouldn't fit into my schedule. And honestly, I didn't really have any jobs that they would want anyway. They always wanted you know bar supports, bards, you know majors, whatever. And so I bought the items for the black belt. Now I had to make that gill. And honestly, like I had to track the TODs for those NMs as well. Like you know they were ran. Like so I put in a like it took several months. And I was like I was still waking up at odd hours in the night just to get TODs for monsters. I was still like getting outbid all the time because I could only lowball the items because i got it wasn't rich so like it's but in in retrospect like i wasn't part of the guild i didn't kill those monsters right so like i mean from a true perspective like i murked that right and yet i can you still did, yeah. i still feel like i take pride in it which is kind of weird so like i think that's an interesting kind of example of just how broad this topic is you know like yeah. um versus maybe yeah. like in 14 like there might be a guild selling the highest level eden weapon and you pay them and in 15, you know, 20 minutes, they, you just sit in a fight and they clear it and you get the weapon. Right. Like, I feel like there, in my mind, there's like a difference there, right? Like there's this, like, you can still, I don't know, but I guess that's, oh, so yeah. You, so. Because, because you feel like you still worked for it versus yeah, just being yeah. completely passive and said, yeah. here's money. Give yeah. me, you know, give me my item. Yeah. And maybe so, if you, maybe if instead of doing all that work, if you had like to Van's point, if you had bought the gill, from like a third party to have it and then yeah. paid for it that way and not really done a yeah. whole lot. I bought enough gill where I could different. pay the most. And like, yeah. I just got yeah. it every, like within a week. Yeah. Of, Cause I'm sure people did that. I'm sure people bought gill <laughs> within a week had a black belt. Cause they went in and just threw a ton of gill at the H and So like, yeah, no doubt. of course we'll take that. But yeah. all right. Um, this week example in lost ark so i joined i recently joined a new guild in lost ark and they actually do internal bus runs and i didn't like i saw this going on i'm like what is this in, like what's involved like did they just pay each other like so eventually i like i didn't sign up so i asked them i'm like what what's that all about and they're like oh no like basically if you just you just sign up to run a bus during the week on your main or a main character and they have like certain th- criteria for how you set up bus runs and then and then you can just run on 1370s and other buses during the week and so I thought that was a really interesting idea. So, like, basically, you're helping the guild out for a run and basically getting other people free gold on characters that they wouldn't even be able to complete all of this fight on because they're, they're, they have access, but they're too low, really, to do it. And then, basically, then you benefit. So, it's kind of like a scratch your back. You know, I scratch your basically, back, scratch what, mine. basically what Van said before, right? Your guild or your friends helping you yeah. through stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. in a way, we, we did that with Argos this last weekend, right? Like, we did two yeah. runs and... I went on my highest character and you went on some low ones and then we flipped and, and Ar- but, uh, Ar- got DC yeah. halfway through, but <laughs> in those cases, all of our characters were really at the eye level that could do Argos, right? Like here we're talking about like, yeah. you're running like 13, like, you know, the, the, the non carries yeah, like, you're running, like any 
groups. That's yeah, right. like That's you, like literally, it's like two to four people running the just just fighting. The other four are literally doing nothing because they they really can't. Yeah. Like outside of the first fight, they would just die almost immediately. And so, it I don't know. Like I guess it didn't. It felt kind of cool to me in a way that we were helping each other out. But I guess part of that too is that like everybody is contributing during the week in some way, right? Like people who are passengers in one run are driving the bus in other days, right? Like so, it's not like anybody in the groups like I've never cleared this fight on a character, right? Like. They're just, you know, everybody, I don't know. Um, they've right. done the but content. It's, it's like, it's interesting though, because right, you're, you're still paying, right? You're just paying with time rather than gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? You're, <laughs> you're, you're expected to pay with a, yeah. a run of your own on your own time for yeah. little benefit. And so, yeah, it's well, interesting it's how you think of it differently a little bit then. Like when you yeah. put a hard currency as part of the transaction, it does change the way people view it. I wouldn't even say a little benefit though, because like you're, you're still getting full gold on your main when you run it, you know? So like it's as if you're yeah. running it with a pickup, it might be slower because you have a bunch of dead weight going, you know I mean? Maybe that's what you're saying is a longer a run. Harder. Um, yeah. but all right. So you're then inconveniencing one, yourself a little bit yeah. for the good of the guild, right? I had one last thought in relation to Lost Ark specifically, but I think, and it, it may be, I don't know, it'd be interesting your, your thoughts if, and I think this ties into what you're saying about story missions with 14, right? Like 14 got, became such a big game eventually. And if you were a new player, there might be stuff that just nobody was doing anymore. And so that would be like, you're saying that was like a, a wall. And I think the thing with lost Ark right now is like, and I think Korea is feeling it a lot. Is that like the progression gets so extreme with lost Ark? You hear this a lot from streamers and content creators that like, it's so hard to get new players to start the game because there's no way really to easily get them up to where the current players are and to do like current content. And so like, I think it'd be hard to find like, even learning groups for some of the lower fights, you know, or like progression groups because nobody's doing that. And so, like, I, I could see a, even a group for a lot of the lower fights. I, I could, um, yeah, I could see a Go new ahead. player. Like, I mean, I heard a streamer the other day tell he basically was talking about getting a friend into Lost Ark in Korea and just telling him to like bust a bunch of content early on. Like, he told his friend like to get into it. Like, you just have to bust a lot of stuff. Like, go ahead and do it. And like, just because that was the only way he was going to be able to get clears on some stuff to be able to then get, you know, slowly caught. I don't know. Like that was an interesting idea to me. And just like that, maybe some people even might be running into that issue. It's not even just a time issue. It's just a, even just not able to like run content outside of busing. Yeah, I think that's but, a different podcast right. because I think Lost Ark, <laughs> Lost Ark has a, a problem with yeah. new player and, and, and lower casual players. I think that is going to, cause trouble in the future but all right well let me flip it around then um and we'll go snake style i'll go back to shy here and then van and then myself um what about being on the other side of it um and maybe you talked about this a little bit with what you just did with your guild but like would you feel differently if you're the bus driver right if you're the merc crew who's who's would you ever find you know what what would you think about charging people and t taking them through content being the person who's getting people that, those clears does that change the way you view it if you're on that side of the equation do you think that's still scummy to be accepting money for those kind of services shy again i'll start with you yeah i imagine if i was doing it i would feel differently about it <laughs> you know I'd, I'd be just i'd be justifying it in my own mind or the very fact that i'm doing it would mean that I'm well, okay i mean, I, it, I mean right? no i mean i guess my question is would you do it though like if if tomorrow yeah. like somebody in your guild said hey Shy, you're you're you seem like a really good player. Do you want to start? Let's start a bus. Let's start a weekly bus and bus yeah. our, bus people through this and make some money. What, would you be like, nah, bro, it's not me? Or would you be like, hey, no, no. sounds like a good business opportunity? That's a good question. Like, I I don't. This gets into a lot. This be this. I mean, I don't know. It's this like, this is a very intricate right? question because there's a lot of a lot of elements in it, right? So like, I don't want to get too deep it down the hole of my brain, but like, I think like. I like, I really like the whole like guild bus thing. I think that's pretty cool. So I wouldn't want to like drop that. Right. So that mean like if I had a second, like right now I only have one character that can even bus. Right. So if I had like a second character that could do that, I mean, I don't know. Like part of it's like, there's like, if you can't beat them, join them mentality where it's like people are out there paying for buses. Like, why wouldn't you just profit off of that? I wonder, I don't know. Like I wouldn't. And I also have heard people like it was like busing this last week. Argos was very different when only, you know, you're each taking a mini bus. You know, you're, there's only two yeah. people taking, I mean, it, it feels a little more intense. Like, and it like, then like it feels like with our main. So like I've, I've seen streamers talk about where they really enjoy busing low man buses. Like they, that's like a thing they really enjoy in the game. Like they profit from it, but also well, like tried. they like yeah. that low man like mentality. And so that's a good question. I don't, I don't think that would happen anytime soon, but I can't say that I would immediately be like, 
you know, I'm not empowering those idiots or, you know, I'm not going to facilitate the busing culture in Lost Ark. Like, I don't know. What about you, Van? Would you ever be a Merc? <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting question. Um, I had a whirlwind of emotions as soon as you asked it. Really? And, and, and had to look inside to see if I was being honest in, in my it's answers. A, it's a good topic today. And I like that. I'm looking forward I, to it. <laughs> I, um... Number one, have you ever teletaxied anybody in Final Fantasy XI? I is still that, do. Is that, is I, that, I, that, I, clear. Like, you better walk. You better on, walk there. I log on every day to do my gardening, and I'm usually on White Mage just in case there's a stray shout for a deli. <laughs> if I can jump on that, make it 5K. Absolutely. Have, have you not leveled I mean, White Mage? Original, <laughs> literal original busting right there. Here's 5,000 gold. Good. I will, Gil, I will take you to this place. Good. It's You're right. I've been bu- in, in, that's a fair point. I've been busting since 2002. Oh man. <laughs> uh, in that case, we've all accepted it too from people. I'm sure also. So we're all hypocrites. Yeah. Um, I would absolutely do it. I would 100% do it. If somebody came up to me, one of the friends I was playing with, and they said, "Hey, let's start a busing. Let's make money. We can charge this much." I would 100% do it, and I would judge the people we're busing the entire time I'm doing it too. Oh, you would? Absolutely, <laughs> 100%. Yeah, but I would take their money happily. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I mean, that's Fair. ultimately where I where that's I would land on that. Yeah, I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close with you, Van. I I mean, I when I was playing Final Fantasy XI retail, um, kind of the last time we played as we were getting towards the end of it, like I was kind of thinking that that's where I wanted to branch out into because it was very rampant in that game, um, like murking, like aeonic weapons and and you know there's so much now that especially a dual boxer or a tri boxer can accomplish with or a low man group. You know, like, especially once you get to the real top tier gear, you can do a lot of those fights that are originally meant for 12 to 18 people with a group of six and really carry people through. And I, I, that's something I thought maybe we'd branch into. Like, it's just kind of like kind of what you were talking about a little bit, Shy. Like, it's, there's a cool challenge to it. And like, ultimately, I, I wouldn't I mean, I, I don't feel like I would have a like a derisive attitude to the people who are, who's paying me. Like in a way I feel like I'm I'm helping people. Like some people, whatever, you know, for whatever their reasons are, like if, if I can help them get something they want, it's like I said earlier, I feel like it's a mutually beneficial relationship. I can make some money. They can get their item. Everybody goes home happy. Like that's just a business transaction to me. So um, it's not something I do currently. I don't think I'm good enough in lost Ark to do that. Um, I know I'm not, maybe one day I will be. Um, but I certainly don't have any moral objection to it. Again, to me, it's a free market thing. Like I would, I would never want the game to be in a position. And I think this is kind of what Shy was getting to. Um, I would feel differently if it was like the game got to a place where people had to bust to progress. Mm-hmm. I don't want to encourage that. I don't like that. But I think as long as it's like, hey, it's your money to spend how you want. If you want to pay me to help you get through this content, ching you know again we both win so okay and then so let's take it a little bit away from unless you guys have anything else to say about that i want to just kind of zoom out a little bit and talk about like what about the effect of that sort of economy i guess on a game do you think like you know, there's like that's the hot topic in Lost Ark right now. Like if you go to the forums, there's you can find five topics uh about busing is killing the game. This is terrible for the game, this is so bad. Busing is great for the game. If they get rid of busing, if they log if they if they ban busing, it's gonna ruin everything. Like people are on both sides of the issue and like are very passionate about it. So I'm just curious kind of what you guys think. Um, like do you think there is a good, bad, or like no effect like do you just think it is what it is and it doesn't really have a a good or bad impact on on an mmo in general for this kind of service-based economy to exist within the game i'll start with i'm gonna start with van this time i think it's too um too broad of a question to answer definitively one way or another i think it really wouldn't matter on the game i don't know enough about lost ark but if they're like, like one thing that leads to rampant inflation is the addition of gold or gill or whatever type of currency the game's using um, into the economy. And it seems like busing is, is a way that would artificially do that for people who otherwise would not have cleared the content. And now they're getting this, this, max, this insane amount of gold. Whereas previously, if you worked hard, you got it. The item that you were going to purchase may not have been as expensive because there just isn't that much gold floating around the economy. So I can I can certainly see how that can can ruin the economy. And and whenever the economy goes in a game, like it, it it's just a downward spiral for a lot of other things that 
that are enjoyable in, in said game as well. So um, I don't know. I, I think it's too broad of a question. I'd really like to know why some people are saying what's because I don't follow the Lost Ark um, forums, but to see what some people are saying are the good reasons for it, why they promote it, why they believe that it, you know, if it, if it were to go away tomorrow or if they banned it and that in and of itself is another question. How the hell do you ban busing? Um, well, they they thought it was getting banned for a little bit because uh, there was like a fake GM letter that somebody doctored that you know said they got banned for like it's because like you can't in Lost Ark you can't directly transfer gold like I can't just trade you fifty hmm. gold right? you had to use kind of the old RMT uh, auction house thing where it's like okay go put a cheap item. For Are sale for like that's how you 20k and I'll buy it and that's how yeah that's how that's how it kind of oh. works and then if you're <laughs> not on the same server it's even more complex you have to yeah. jump through a bunch of hoops and so uh, but like you can identify that and somebody said no oh, I got banned because uh, they set up my my item was bought with RMT gold and like everybody's like oh my god we can't do busing anymore because you don't know if that gold it looks like an RMT transaction and like everybody was losing their minds and then oh like gosh, some of the funny. mods came down and said that's not a real message. Nobody got banned for spending 400 gold on a, you know, on a gem like that, that didn't actually happen. Like, and busing is not something we're currently legislating out of the game. So, but yeah, I mean, it was, there was like a, a the anti busing scare happened. Like, what was that shy? Like a couple of weeks ago, yeah. last month. Yeah. Sometimes like, few, just and everybody, yeah. everybody kind of was really, like I said, it really got a lot of comments on both sides. And like, some people were like, thank God they got rid of busing. And other people were like, I'm quitting the game if busting is not a thing. Well, I'd say if Shy doesn't cover it, I'd like to hear some of the, the reasons for. To, to Go ahead. What Shy, what do you got? It. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I do think, so the two games I want to talk about specifically as far as like, do I think it's bad for the game are Lost Ark and Final Fantasy fourteen. I think in fourteen, I don't think it mattered. Like people would, you know, pay for groups to carry them through the hardest content in the game, but that stuff was unsellable. Like all that stuff was rare, you know, was, was, it was character bound. So like it didn't affect and you didn't get currency from those fights. So like it bothered me. People were walking around with like end game weapons that like we weren't good enough to clear. Like we, we worked hard on some of those fights and we, we just weren't good enough to clear some of those, some of the hardest fights. And sometimes people would just walk in and pay a guild to do it for them. And they'd be walking around with like the best weapon or the best gear, or, you know, the title. And I did bother me. Like I felt like they were posers, you know? Um, but uh, I think uh, I, I so I don't think it matters for fourteen, and I, like there's games out there I don't think it matters. Um, I do think it's bad for Lost Ark, even though I'm I guess I'm participating in it now in my guild because like take my guild for example, like there's probably at least twenty to thirty thirteen seventy alts that are getting carried through Argos a week, it just in my guild, and that's close to ninety thousand gold that's being introduced to the economy that wouldn't be right. I mean you think about that that in one guild on one server, and you think about that I mean. We're not even, I mean, we're not even a hardcore guild. Like, well, that's happened, you know, inflation is happening in Lost Ark because of busing. And and so I do think it's having a negative impact. Um, so I don't think it's probably the best thing for that game. I do, Van, I feel, and maybe Smiley has some other input for this. I bet that the people who are saying that if you killed busing, it would ruin the game. They're all people that are benefiting from busing. They're the ones running the buses, so they don't want it to go away. Mm. And maybe, and maybe it, well, and maybe Smiley, I don't know. Like, I, I think that, uh, and probably a lot of like the more skilled people in the game or the people who are shrewd benefit from it and they see it as either challenging or they're making a lot of gold from it. And so like there, if it was taken away there, I mean, you know, I mean, that's just, they, they want that kind of like economy or whatever, you know, there may be entrepreneurial people or whatever. And so like, if that was, if they were forced into kind of more of a linear, you do so much per week to get a certain amount of gold and everybody's kind of on the same level playing field maybe that kind of gameplay style wouldn't interest them anyway. They'd look for another game. They go to EVE Online or look for another game that has kind of more of that open market or economy and they can like benefit from, you know, kind of shrewd deals or, you know, doing the, I don't know. I, that'd be my impression and kind of why I think some people make those arguments. But I agree with everything you said, Shy, except for one word, which is all. Because I definitely think like a large vocal minority of the people who are the bus drivers and like, it's partially because, as you said, they enjoy that content. It's also mostly because they're profiting from it and that's how they're financing their characters and financing, pushing their character. But I also think there that there are people who are bus riders who like, nobody's, again, nobody's forcing these people to pay the money to do this. They want to, they find it 
beneficial to them. It either saves them time, it's getting them clears that they wouldn't be mm-hmm. able to clear. It's especially, I mean, Lost Ark has a lot of problems, in my opinion. One of them right now is Fions are a huge issue, in my opinion. And again, another issue that people are on both sides of, and some people say it's mandatory for the game and it'd be a lot worse without them. But the fact is, right now, it's very hard to gear up your alts through the auction house because fions are prohibitively expensive. And so for a lot of people, it's like they feel like I can't afford to get gear that makes me good enough to run this content. But if I bus it, I'm getting the gold to pay for that. I'm getting item drops that maybe will I can use as better gear than what I currently have. And so like they feel like to to some people they feel like busing is the only way that they're able to make progress on some of their characters. And so that's that's it's not just the drivers. Uh the riders want it too in a lot of cases i think mostly the people who don't like it are the people who don't use it in a way right. it's like the people who are like other people are making a shit ton of money on this and i'm not so i'm getting left out and i'm not benefiting from it so really it's just this thing on the side that other is enriching other yeah. people but not me those are the people who i think want it gone the most personally yeah. um i think i think if you're participating in either side of the bus there's a reason and you like it um Again, unless maybe the, the exception being people who feel like they have to bus. Um, because it's there. Kind because of like, it's there. And it, yeah. like maybe if maybe if there was no busing, there'd be more learning groups and stuff like that. That would be or people would be more understanding of having suboptimal gear for these runs. Um, yeah. But but in general, I think that those are kind of the camps that we see. So. So are, are they are they stating that if you get rid of busing? It'll ruin the game because you're just going to have a huge amount of people quit since they can't bus anymore and they're not going to play. I mean, I, like- think, I think it's too far. I think there's that. I think there's just like that, like you're just disenfranchising your hardcore players to Shy's point, right? The people who do it because they enjoy it, do it because that's how they finance their stuff. Like it's frustrating to them and like they're, you know, they want that sort of thing in the game. But I think the, the, one of the big complaints right now with the game in general is that they did this summer event that basically gave everybody like a free 1370 character, which like everybody's now got like a character that in many cases, they don't know how to play very well. They haven't had an opportunity to gear. They haven't built up any gear over time because they just got boosted there by the game, like legitimately in the game. And so their, their gear is incredibly bad. They have no tripods. They have no gems. They have nothing. And so then they're queuing up for content and trying to do it. And so then when you take your well-geared character and you join a group that's got three characters that are really you know, just not on the level you're used to. Now you're carrying them for free in a way. Right. Like, and so a lot of people are just like, this is bullshit. Like every queue, it's these fights that used to take four minutes. Now they take 10 minutes and I'm, I'm doing 70% of the damage because these clowns are here with no engravings. And like, it, it really frustrates people. And, um, I think that's where they're saying, like, if you get rid of busing, now all these people who are riding the bus, now they actually have to go do the content with their crappy character that, they don't know how to play and that doesn't have the gear to do it. And now I have to be in the queue with them, like not getting paid, yeah. but still carrying their ass through. <laughs> and that causes a lot of angst. Um, so that that's, those are the two, the two primary reasons I think that they feel like busing has, has helped make, make a, make a better game. So, so Lost Ark is going to be interesting to me as somebody now who's invested so much time in this game and is kind of where I am to just see what it like, I've never actually been and maybe you guys have in a way, in a way that I have not You guys were part of Arc Age and like you've been part of MMOs that you were really invested in that really kind of like crashed and burned. And I never really have been like, like I always j- have jumped shit before it's gotten that bad. And Final Fantasy 11 went on forever, right? Like I'm wondering what's going to happen if like, will they be able to correct some of these problems or is, is Lost Ark going to really run into some hard times? And what's that going to be like to play through it? So, I don't know. I mean, Arc Age, I mean, it feels like we invest a lot of time into it, but I, that was that was a pretty short-lived game. We played that game <laughs> I, for about maybe like two, two and a half months, maybe. Like, And we played a lot, but... All I know is we played longer than they, <laughs> It burned. It burned out quick. Like, I mean, at this point, we've been playing Lost Ark for more than six months. And like, you know, so like, I mean, I don't know. We haven't really seen... I don't know that we've really had experience with a game dying after we've been playing it for that long. You know, because at that point, we're almost... A lot of the MMOs we've kind of dabbled in, you know. The next closest second would have been what, Terra? 
Well, Terra, I think we played longer. I think we played Terra longer than. Uh, That's what I mean. Like, like we played, yeah, yeah, yeah. We played it longer than. than Especially RK. you guys, because you guys played for quite a while before I even joined you, and then we yeah. all played together for a significant amount. Like I was hard yeah. enough to get an end game in that and do end game stuff with you guys, even though I came yeah. in. I came in and like a couple people quit who'd been playing for so long. Yeah. Like Rido and FC quit right when I started. Well, a lot of the games we did. Been, yeah. Ryder didn't do anything with us like once you guys all yeah yeah Yeah. and like they came they like came and hung out on the uh on that starting island when i started and you guys were running around like you know and i'm like (laughs) oh and then then fc never got on again i think Ryder maybe one more time (laughs) and because it was you there was the three of us and z and ray i feel like were the kind of the core of that game by the time i was and Sheenie, yeah yeah Yeah, think, that was our six man group, right? Those, those, that was the six of us. Us three, she needs Z and Ray. Yeah. A lot of the games we've combat. quit, we quit with good, like we quit not because the game sucked or died, but we just moved on, right? Like 14 was yeah. that way. Planet Side was that way. Destiny. Black you Desert. know, they're like, they're good games. I mean, they're good games and they've solved, we had a lot of fun with them. But yes, yeah, <laughs> that game sucked. That game always sucked. That game was never good. The fat, the fat Sith Lord. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, my Sith Lord was the shit. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, make a character that wasn't a freaking model. That like, you know, he kind of feel like he kind of looked like me. Like I liked it. I liked we had it a lot, lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with the old. Film. It was a fun game. It wasn't a great game, but it was, it was a fun. It was game. trash. That's we had fun, fun, but the game was trash. Oh my God! All right, friends. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just realized the other day I was like, why is my computer so bloated? And I realized I actually still had it installed on my computer. So I was like, oh, I got to uninstall that. <laughs> Sorry, Old Republic. Uh, oh, man. Not not meant to be a dis a dis pod to Old Republic, but here we are. Um, all right, jumping. Uh, could be a couple couple weeks, possibly months before we before we reconvene. Any any final thoughts? Final final things you want to tell our fans? Yeah, Man. we've all been here before. We'll yeah, be here no. again. And um, yeah, we'll I'm sure we'll be back. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe in a post-apocalyptic future, but we'll find a way. That's right. And, like you know, it. maybe, you know, hopefully we could try and get some other content out, even if it's like solo or, or like out of focus. If there's times where two of us have some time to get together, maybe we do an out of focus pod here or there, even if it's nothing official to keep the channel going. So, um, so yeah, we will be back at you again. If you have any, like, questions concerns feedback if you want to just ask where we're at shoot us an email focus target podcast at gmail.com that's the best place to reach us we will try to keep on top of that respond even while we're on hiatus so uh thank you all for being with us for uh 119 episodes of the focus target podcast wow. we'll hopefully be back with 120 sometime in the near future so this is your host captain smiley this is shy and i'm ben as always cover us porkins we're out <laughs>